16. Don't shout, I tell you. Don't shout. I'll shout if I want to. Who's to prevent me from shouting? Listen to me. Why won't you listen? You're a liar. A liar. You lied when you married me and you lied to get rid of me. You're a liar and a cheat. That's enough of that. Get out of here. That's a nice thing for a wife to say. I'm nothing of the sort. Oh, yes, you are. And you're not going to get rid of me with your silly Reno divorce. You're my wife. Well, what about it? And I'm not going to have any boys hanging round. What do you mean? Oh, you can't fool me. I've watched him. I've followed him down here. I saw him come in. Don't be a fool. That boy is a only... liar. Liar. Why won't you listen? Because I'm not an idiot. You quit me eight years ago to go on the screen. I, who've worked for you, took you out of the chorus, lifted you out of the gutter. Now you spend your time going around with boys, you. Go on, say it, say it! Now it's a mermaid. Keep quiet. This woman was never drowned. She was strangled with this belt. Oh. oh! Keep back, Terry, for body, please. Now then, which of you found the body first? I did. No, he didn't. We did. Well, both of you? Elsie saw it first, that's right. But he says he did. Well, he didn't. Oh, contradictory evidence, eh? Whatever, silly. Now, just a moment, if you don't mind. Now then, miss, what's your tale? Well, we were both going down to bathe, and just as we got round that piece of cliff, we saw this young man running away. It's absurd. I was running to get help. You weren't. You were running away, wasn't he, Alice? That's right. Oh, nonsense. The girl's hysterical. I'm not. I'm never hysterical. You were running away. You know you were. But it's fantastic. I saw the body from the top of the cliff, so naturally came down. I couldn't be sure she was either dead or only unconscious. You see, I didn't see the belt, so I ran off to get help so that I could apply artificial respiration. I was only there a few minutes. This woman has only been dead a few minutes. Uh, well, it's time we got this thing finished. Now, is this belt yours or isn't it? For the hundredth time, I tell you it isn't. How did 
do you know it isn't? You've already admitted that you've got a raincoat. Don't put down, got put, had a raincoat. Which you've lost. No, not lost, which I had stolen. Why do you try and twist everything I say? Don't get excited, old man. It's only a formality. You had it stolen. Let it go at that. When was it stolen? Well, I can't remember. You see, I left it in the car and went in to get some cigarettes. When I came back, it was gone. You mean it just went into thin air? Yes. What sort of a place was this? A common shelter called Tom's Hat. All right, we'll let that go. Now, did you know the dead woman well? Yes, fairly well. I knew her in America. Would it be uh, unfair to suggest that you were especially good friends? Mr. Kent means her lover. It would be damned unfair. Then we can put down that you were friends, good friends. Oh, friends. put down what you like. Were you good enough friends to discuss money? What's the idea? We discussed money three years ago when I sold her a story. She paid me in good, hard cash. I received money from her on former occasions. Talking of money, would it be accurate to say that you were uh, not well off? Be more than accurate. It'd be perfectly true. Would it? Considering the fact that she's left you 1,200 pounds in her will? Now, what's happened to him? Passed out or pretended to. Of course he's passed out. I've been told that a mile off. What's that for? To put under his head, of course. That's no good. Sit him up and hold his head down. Now, give me a hand. Go and get some brandy. You seem to be pretty good at this sort of thing. Yes, I learned something by being a go guide. Did you learn that slapping trick in the guides, too? No, I learned that from riding in cars with detectives. Did you do that to detectives' ears as well? No, I got this from a boxer's dressing room. Brings them round like fun. A bit painful, isn't it? Well, you don't notice it when you've had the rest of your face bashed in. Oh, I say, we weren't as brutal as all that, you know. Hey, give me the brandy, I'll do it. He'll be all right in a minute. What have you been doing to him? Oh, he's all right. Don't waste your sympathy on him, Miss Burgoyne. Is he guilty? No idea yet. I shouldn't think so. He doesn't look like a criminal. Don't let looks influence you, young lady. I don't. Anyway, he's not my type at all. What the devil happened? You passed out. Don't be ridiculous. I've never passed out. What do you mean? Well, there was something very much like it. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Let's go and find Father. He seems to like the brandy. He'll probably go again. Next time, throw a bucket of water over him. Who's that? Chief Constable's daughter. She's got a nerve. She certainly has. Only evidence Hello, there is. That's right, sir. Just proceedings will be quite formal. Well, in that case, I can't understand why they question him half the night. I think Scotland Yard men have their own methods, sir. Is there someone decent to represent him? I think they've got Mr. Big, sir. Oh, talk sense, Inspector. Well, there was no one else, sir. All right. Well, where have you been? I'm just snooping around. I left my papers in the car. Go on. Don't get involved, will you? Get it yourself. Well, in the ordinary way, I would. If I'd seen standing beside that thing, I'd have to resign. It shouldn't be such a disgusting snob parlor. Besides, it's almost human. You ought to love it. Then will you ask it very politely to move? It's blocking the entrance to the court. Come on. Sorry, I can't help you some other time, perhaps. Now then, come on. Try giving it some brandy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Briggs. Lovely morning. Mustn't be downhearted on a morning like this, must we? Does one good to see the sun, doesn't it? My wife was saying only this morning, Henry, don't be so gloomy about the case, she said. Nice of her. Wasn't it? We hadn't had a case like this for 12 years. Hardly to be expected in a little place of this sort. Mostly affiliation orders and things like that. No, oh, a case like this is most exciting for us all. Wouldn't it be a good thing to talk it over? 
Well, he can't do any actual harm. Though there'll be plenty of time before the trial. The trial? Oh, I'm afraid so. I... Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> well, now, where was I? Oh, yes. Yes, well, now... Well, it doesn't look too good, does it? However, we mustn't be depressed about it. Now, take this point. Those two girls that saw you running away. Why were you running away? I wasn't. No? Oh, well, it certainly looked very like it. I mean, that's going to be very hard to explain away. Like the money that poor dead creature left you. That's going to be hard to explain away, too. Yes, that, uh, that looks very like motive to me. However, we mustn't despair. Not actually despair. Nil desperandum. Oh, now, I should be very much happier. Oh, much, much happier if it were not for that belt. No, oh, dear me, that belt. Mr. God, I could get out and go and find the blasted coat. I swear it was stolen at Tom's hat. You lost your hat, too? Oh, no. Oh, well, that's something. No, oh, yes, that's quite a good point. Or isn't it? Tom's hat is a common shelter on the main Crompton Road. If only I could get my coat with a belt on it, the police would realize what a colossal blunder they're making. Well, of course, I'll do everything I can for you. Though I do wish you had been more frank with the police about it. It always pays to be frank with the police. However... Are you representing the police by any chance? Oh, dear me, no, my dear fellow. I'm on your side. Uh, tell me, when they searched you, did they leave you your money? Uh, yes, sir. Uh... Two pounds, uh, three shillings. I wonder if it would be asking too much if I were to have a trifle on account. Certainly. How much? Well, I thought perhaps a couple of pounds. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, it would be a great pity if you hadn't any money. Counsel costs a great deal, you know. However, perhaps you've got some friends who will come to your rescue at the last minute. Your case next, Mr. Briggs. Ah. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me, I've just mislaid my glasses, you know, and I'm quite lost without them. Ask them to delay proceedings for me a little while, will you? I shan't be able to read my notes. We mustn't be depressed on a day like this. Must we? Hmm? Oh. Hold on a minute, the other case is just finished. Yes, yes. Well, we needn't go into that. Mrs. Vessels, do you really want a separation order? Oh, no, sir, but I don't want him to carry on at me so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vessels, will you promise me to behave yourself in future? Aye, I will, sir. Maybe I were a bit hasty. Do you think it's as much like you would be? You are really so stupid. Yes, well, I shall bind you over to keep the peace for six months. Oh, sir, can't you make it eight months to carry me over Christmas? No. That'll do. Next case, please. Home. I'm off to see an old pal. Yeah, and your old pal's the king's house. Oh, stow it. Hey. Here, this is the wrong man. Then you lot run down to the spinney at once. Three of us around it, other one search the spinning. Look for a murder in a spinning, not me. Oh, afraid, are you? Oh, no, not a fool. Well, take two others with you. Uh, here, you two, and you with the spectacles. Go down to Bingley Lane, that'll take you to the high road. You better luck if you're making for that. One each side of the fence, and one up the road. <laughs> Oh, 
Sergeant, take this car and make yourself to the station. There's a train leaving in quarter of an hour. Make sure he's not on it. Yes, sir. And see that every station up the line is warm. Right, sir. Will you drive it? Drive everything, sir. Oh, but Papa... All right, Erica, the sergeant will do it. Yes, but the thing to do is to put the... It's all right, miss. You leave it to us. Yes, but don't you see, you've got to Sometimes put that... Sometimes things get a bit cold. What's the string doing? Why, that's the choke. That's so good. You can't stop without that. Crank her up again. Yes, sir. Jump on the running board. It's all right. I've stopped. Oh, oh, I thought you must have, miss. It wasn't very uphill. You know, we'll never catch him this way. You two go on your own. What about you, miss? Oh, I'll be all right. I'll find some petrol somewhere. Hold on, young man. Oh, for why? We've got to commandeer you. You're going to what? Use your cart in the name of the law. You can't do that, didn't a Black Mariah? Well, it is for the moment. We've got to get to the railway station quickly. I can't go quickly. Pigs don't like it. Mm. We can't help that. We're on a job. Pigs is my job. I hope you'll be all right, Miss Burgoyne. Don't worry. I hope you'll find him. Uh. Now then, where do we sit? With pigs. Go on, jump up. <laughs> can't you give us a bit more room? Uh. Cart don't reckon to hold more than ten pigs. Uh. Come on. Well, if it isn't Florence Nightingale. What are you doing here? You must be mad. Don't you remember who I am? Yes, you're only the chief constable's daughter. And my ministering angel. I don't see that so very funny. Don't you realize half the countryside is looking for you? So am I, for that matter. Yes, now that you've found me, I insist upon helping you. I'm determined to push this old clock at any rate as far as the petrol station. What do you mean, old crock? Oh, you're crazy. You haven't the hope of escaping. I shall have to tell the police at once. Well, there's one thing you should do. What? Thank me for pushing the car. Thank you. So you should, especially as I'm doing all the work. Two, uh, two gallons, please. Zinde, two gallons. Heard about the escape man? Oh. He's wanted by the police. Really? Just had a three-star stop here for a fill-up. If you see that fellow, you might tell him to keep on escaping. Good for business. I certainly will. Oi! Dad! Dad! Oi! Thanks. How much? Two and eleven. You can keep the penny. Thank you. You must let me know where to send the money to. Anywhere you like. Give it a swing, please. Right, I'll do it. How far is the Tom's head? Well, it goes straight along that road about twice as far as you can see. How far would that be? Oh, about five mile, I reckon. Then turn right, go along a mile, take left fork, and two mile along that road. Not right fork, right fork will take you back to town. Uh, left fork. That's right, and it's two mile up that road. Hear that, my dear? Five miles straight ahead, turn right along a mile, then take the left fork. Yes, I heard. You know I can't possibly... Don't forget it's my pet fork. Straight up that road, miss, about five miles. Yes, thank you, I heard. This isn't Tom's hat. Will you please get out? Why? Because it's my car. It may seem a good reason to you, but it doesn't to me. Apart from that, it's the best thing you can do. Uh, 
Aha, so I've won you over. You most certainly have not. Oh, yes, I have. You see that it's too risky for me to go to Tom's Hat by daylight, so what do you do? Not a thing. You persuade me to send a deserted mill until dark, and then you return and drive me over to Tom's Hat before it closes. I feel like Bonnie Prince Charlie. You must be Flora McDonald. A little while ago, I was Florence Nightingale. That's what I like about you. You're different. How can you joke about this? Don't you know what it means if you're caught? I can make a rough guess. Uh, horribly rough. Well, it isn't funny, is it? No, but I can laugh because I'm innocent. You don't believe that, do you? I wish you did. Well, what are you going to do? From what we're about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Okay. Chris, do behave yourself. I meant to think what grace means. Okay. It ought to be said in Latin, really. You needn't swank just because you were top in Latin last term. Go to the dentist this morning. Yes, Dad. It hurt? No fear. Look. Oh, it is a big hole, isn't it? But it didn't hurt. I hardly felt anything. <laughs> the only thing is, I must have my potatoes mashed. You know. I don't mind going to the dentist. You were jolly white at breakfast. I wasn't. Yes, you were. You were wobbling like a jellyfish. Yeah, let's have a look. Big, isn't it? Well, do get on with your lunch. It's not a very nice conversation. I may have to have a plate. Stanley, be quiet. Chris, you might lend me your gun after lunch. I want it myself, old boy. Erica, you shouldn't let either of them have it. It's highly dangerous. Top, Top of, of the, the class. class. Don't tease him, you two. He does speak English. Highly dangerous. Oh, shut up. Now, that is English. Chris can't shoot straight anyway. Can't I? What about this? Christopher, don't be disgusted. It's a jolly fine one. Take it away, Chris, and go and wash your hands. I washed them before last. Do as I tell you. Okay. Sergeant tells me you ran out of petrol, Erica. Yes, I... I had to push her for miles. Haven't they caught him yet? No, not yet. It's only a matter of time, of course. Of course, my dear Watson. Uh, is your tooth all right, Stanley? Shall I have your potatoes mashed with milk? It's all right. Don't fuss, Erica. It really depends how much money he has. That's often a big factor in cases like this. Big what? Factor. Never heard of him. Richard. How much did he have on him? Oh, please think about three shillings. That artful old solicitor took two or three pounds in advance. Did you wash your hands, Christopher? Yes, Erica. Then sit down and get on with your lunch. Directly he spent those last three shillings, it looks to me as if he's caught like a rat in a trap. What was I tell you, Christopher? Okay. Guns are the best things for rats. Don't be such a swank. The rat was probably dead when you shot it. Wasn't it? It was racing across the backyard. If I could go and look for this chap with my gun, I could have a pop at him, couldn't I, Father? Oh, Christopher, don't talk so much. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I wonder what he'll buy with his last three shillings. Food, of course. I know that. I meant what kind of food? Sausages. The best thing will be chocolate. It has very good staying power. Suppose you didn't dare go into a shop to get food. Then I'm afraid he'll be very hungry. And that, of course, may force him to come back. Unless he faints of hunger and dies in the field. With rooks pecking at his eyes. Inspector Marshbanks on the phone for you. Perhaps there's some news. Yes, Inspector? No news at all. Well, there must be some sort of clue. Yes, I see. Poor devil. All right, I I'll come along presently. Let me know, won't you, if anything turns up. Yes. Go back. Have they caught him yet? No, not yet. You don't think much of our police force. They want some young blood, don't they, Father? I'll give you young blood. If they don't find him, will you get the sack, Father? I should have read all surprised. I don't think he's got much chance, though. The inspector tells me that he only had a couple of kilos. Don't wait for me. Right? I shan't be a minute. 
All the roads are encircled. Can't last long. Jolly exciting, isn't it? Looking for these. So you came back after all. You really do think I'm innocent. Not at all. I... I came back to pay my debt for the petrol. Hello, what's that? Food? I... I really don't know. You're right, it's dangerous for you to be around here. Seriously, I'm very grateful. And if it's any consolation to you, I want you to know that I'm innocent. Just because I know nothing about this horrible business, I made that dash for it this morning. I know if only I can get to that carbon shelter, I can put an end to this crazy situation. Do you mind if I eat? Shelters is more than I can bear. 24 hours since I made anything but police station tea. No table. murderer like me with a knife, eh? It isn't that at all. I... I just forgot it. There you are. You see, you don't believe I'm a murderer. Now, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. Christine Clay was strangled with a belt from a raincoat. I knew her and can't produce my raincoat. It was stolen. But I'm going to find it with this belt. You'll see. Then I shall be cleared. Did you... What were you going to say? Nothing. It doesn't Now, matter. go on. What were you going to say? Did you know Christine Clay very well? No. Uh, I met her in Hollywood. She liked the story I wrote her and asked me to do another, that's all. I went to a cottage three or four times, talk things over. Beyond that, see that? What? Bit of paper coming out of the old mill. Someone's in there. Oh, perhaps it's, uh... Yes. Come on. It's true I did a good turn, but I never dreamed she goes so far as to leave me something in her will. Is that your dog? Yes, why? What's he barking for? He wants to be let in, I suppose. Grab hold of them. Me? Yes, get on with it. But what if he bites me? In the cause of duty, you may get a stripe. What's good of a stripe if I haven't got no arm to wear it on? Go on, grab hold of that dog. It's all right. 
leave him alone and come inside. Anyone up there? No. Now then, my lad, this is no time for fun. You go up aloft and have a look. All right, Sergeant. No one up there. Are you sure? Oh, I couldn't see no one. Did you look? Of course I did. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make sure. Haven't you got no confidence in me, Sergeant? None at all. I'm a good mind to go up and have a look myself. Good. <laughs> Stop, I'll jump out. Let's stun him in the eye. First round to us. Little big little dark now. Next stop, Tom's hat. What was the man at the petrol pump said? Mile to the crossroads, then take a left fork. Two miles beyond that and into all our troubles. Our troubles? Your troubles, you mean? Can't you realize what you've done? You've made me run away from Sergeant Ruddock. Why, he, he's my friend. He taught me how to drive. My father's chief constable, can't you understand? I'm on their side. I'm sorry. Forgive me, of course you must drive straight back. Take the left fork anyway. No, you better not go, and somebody might recognize you. I'll find out all I can about the coat. I might as well say this through now. You better hide behind here. Get the fear out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Cup of tea and a piece of cake, please. Take a seat. Bill. Hello. You'll have to stick a card up. Dainty teas. <laughs> I think it's very nice to have ladies' company for a change. Don't you have lots of it? I thought lorries were very popular. Let your lorry out there. I've always wanted to drive one of those. I've always wanted to be a tightrope walker myself. No, you're the wrong build. Better stick to lorry driving. <laughs> <laughs> You don't happen to know, do you, if a raincoat was found here last week? If it was, it'll never reach the lost property office. Let me see now. A coat. Well, as a matter of fact, there was one old fellow. More or less of a tramp, really. He mends broken chart. No. No, I'm wrong, miss. You'll never find that coat. No, you're right, Bill. It was old Will the China Mender. Don't remember? He had a raincoat that was nearly new. Said a bloke had given it to him. We chipped him about it. Trying to kid us that people give brand new coats away. Catch up, blinking Bill. Leave old Will alone. If he did, no need for you go opening your trap and shouting his name all over the place. Well, say what I darn well like. Why, you couple of rotten... <coughs> <Do it. coughs> Oh, my God. 
Your coat. You're quite right, it was stolen. An old tramp's got it, but his two friends wouldn't let him tell me. Oh, oh quick, put your head under there. If you want to find old Will the China Mender, you'll get him late tonight at Nobby's Lodging House at Gilchester. Well, how far is that? About 30 miles. I've often given him a lift there. Here, what's the matter with you? Get oh. out of it. Will? Well? Well, all you have to do now is to get the coat back from the tramp. I'm glad you took the left fork. So am I now. Well, goodbye. Many, many thanks. Come on. Can I just wish you good luck? You ought to get back. How are you going to get there? We'll try one of the lorries. Well, can't they all going the other way? Probably get a lift in the police car. There ought to be one along soon. Marvellous of you, but you're not being very sensible, you know. Must we go on and on about this? Yes, what about your father? Won't he miss you? I've thought all that out. My aunt lives about two miles from where we want to go. I can call on her and then tell my father quite truthfully where I've been. To solve your conscience, huh? Yes, if you like. I need only stay two or three minutes, then we can be off again. Well, this may be useful. What's that for? For getting in touch with her will. But he might be in bed when I get to the lodging house. You mean it doesn't do night work? I shouldn't think so. Oh, well, we can do without it then. I shan't be two minutes. Watch what I don't belong to. I shan't feel too safe to do that. All right. How are you, Miss Erica? It's a long time since we saw you last. Madam will be pleased to see you. It's nice to see you, Layman. Is Auntie in? Oh, yes, miss. It's Miss Felicity's birthday, you know. She's having a party. Oh, well, perhaps I'd better not stay. I'd forgotten about the birthday. Oh, but you must stay, Miss Erica. She'd be so disappointed if you didn't. Just go in. It'll be quite all right. very carefully because I'm going to tie them together very securely in this manner. One knot, two knots. I pull them quite tight. Now the next thing I do is to roll them up tightly into a ball. Oh, and it's very essential for this trick We're just having that the I should place them in the dark. But then perhaps afterward you might help us to look after the children. Really so sweet of you to remember right. Felicity's birthday. Now, children, you all know the game. Don't fidget so, Marjorie. One of you has to go outside. Me? Don't interrupt, Harold. I want to go outside. That is for me to decide. I think I must go. Oh, I see. Well, I'll run along, Harold, and come back. Erica. Erica, you know this game, don't you? I don't think I remember, Auntie. I, I really ought to go. But you've only just come. Of course you remember the game. We used to play it so often and often. Now you go outside and don't come in till we tell you.
Is this Erica's car? Uh, yes, it is, sir. Are you a friend of hers? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, she's inside. Well, and left you out here. I never heard such a thing. Oh, she, she said she wouldn't be long. Oh, yes, she will. It's Felicity's birthday party. Felicity? Mm, my little daughter. She's seven today. Oh, yes, of course. Felicity's birthday. Yeah, I was forgetting. She always brings over a present. Hasn't missed a year. Really? No, not a year. There was something radically wrong. She forgot her birthday. Oh, quite. Well, come along in. No, I, I, I better not. Nonsense. I can't leave her out here like a criminal. Come along. It'll be great fun. I'm sure it will. Erica, my dear, this is a nice state of affairs. You bring a young man, then leave him outside. I only meant to stay a few minutes, Uncle. Oh, nonsense. You must stay here and see the party go with a swing. Erica, we must get away. Every minute's important. It's this frightful party. I'm having an awful job. Yes, I know. You've been so good. I'm so grateful. I could. Come in, now. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Hello, my dear. Do you know what Erica did? Left her friend outside while she was romping with the children. Really? I'm very sorry. I, I honestly only meant to stay a few minutes. I came because I wanted you to... You came to bring Felicity her birthday present, didn't you? Oh, that is sweet of you, Erica. One of those lovely little stone dwarfs for the garden, isn't it nice? <laughs> it's exactly like the ones we've got. It'll fit in so nicely. Hmm, should we join the others? Hello, Daddy. Hello, darling. Oh, Erica, do let's play by the Hello, Christy. Are you having a nice time? Yes, thank you, Erica, but I want to play fine and simple. Well, I expect you can if you ask, Mummy. I mean, I want you to play it. I, I can't just now, dear. I will presently. But why can't you play it now? Come on, we'll play it on our own. Major Cunningham, Mrs. Cunningham. Sit by me. Basil, get the crackers, please. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mr. Uh, Mr. I suppose you're staying with the Burgoynes, Mr. Uh, no, not exactly, quite near. Such a large family. I never remember how many there are. I suppose you find that rather difficult. Yes, Mr. I'm not too sure myself. Erica, I'm so sorry. I didn't quite catch your friend's name. Uh, uh, Beechcroft Manning Tree. Oh, really? That's an extraordinary name, isn't it? I don't think I've ever come across it before. <laughs> come along, Erica. Oh, Let's go now. We can't. Then start thinking things. I started thinking things long ago. Be quiet. Love calls but once, though passion off. Oh. I say, steady, old girl. I'll read it out. You must leave things like that to me, Harold. It was my motto. Are the ices. In the nick of time. We really ought to be going. Yes, I really think we should. Yes, yes, of course. Would you mind taking these ices for me, please? Oh, certainly, of course. Uh, are these strawberry? Yes, the red strawberry and the white's vanilla, you see. Fancy. It's a nice young man, that is, Erica. Has your father known him long? Oh, not very. What does he do for a living? Uh, a sort of clerk, I believe. Oh, in what? Advertising. He makes up advertisements. What a very uncommon name. What did you say, Horace? Uh, a beech tree manning cloth. Oh, I didn't see you there. Would you just take those ices to those nurses over there for me? What a very sweet girl Erica is. Don't you think so, Mr. Croft? Yes, awfully nice. Have you known Colonel Burgoyne long? Oh, yes, years and years. Your work must be very interesting. Uh, my work? Yes, Erica's just been talking to me about it. Oh, yes, of course. Do you like it? So many young men of today dislike their work. Oh, I love it. I find it very satisfying. Difficult to strike the right note. At well, first, perhaps. So, of course, you need a good ear. Yeah. I should have thought an eye would be much more important. Yes, that's important, certainly. But I can read at sight now. Make a pun? I mean, I can sing a piece of music if it's put in front of me. Sing. And play, of course. Oh, yes, of course. I'll tell her definitely we're going. Auntie, I've got rid of those ices. Now, we really should be going. Very well, my dear. It was nice of you to come. It's a pity you have to go so soon. I've had such an interesting talk with your friend, Mr. Manningcroft. We want another game, Mother. Oh, let's get the ices served first. Mm. 
Just wait till the children go. Well, one more. What should it be? Harold wants blind man's buff. I'll be blind man. That's for me to decide, Harold. Mother should be first blind man, eh, Felicity? Tie up, Uncle. I don't oh, think right. so, dear. Oh, do, and then you can try and catch me. Oh, very well. <laughs> Oh, where's Erica? They've gone home. They asked me to say goodbye. You idiot. Didn't you realize there was something going on between them? She didn't know his name. He didn't know it himself, even, really. Oh, you're exaggerating. Nothing of the sort. I wanted to find out more about them. If you hadn't made me play blind man's buff. There you are, Basil. What did I tell you? They've not gone home. They've taken the other direction. King Thorpe, 843, please. Hurry. Oh, why, hello, Margaret. Thought we should never get away. Didn't you think she seemed a bit suspicious? I don't think so. Just naturally inquisitive. She seemed satisfied with the answers I gave. I nearly died when you produced that china dwarf. I wonder if she'll ever miss it from the garden. <laughs> we mustn't laugh. Well, not. It was very funny when she asked my name. I was scared stiff. The look on your face. <laughs> no, we mustn't laugh. It's very serious. You always say we look much better when you're laughing. Do I? Of course, I don't want to make trouble. I, I feel it's my duty to tell you. I mean, Erica's so young, she's at an awkward age. Oh, but I... I can't understand it. Erica always tells me if she's going a long way. And certainly who she's going with. Oh, Gordon Blame is the only man I don't like to see her with. Well, then it was him. I was sure of it. He gave a false name. Yes, but he's in India. Oh, then it wasn't him. Which way did you see the car went? Yes. Yes. All right, I'll, I'll phone you later. But he never even thanked me. Two more miles and we'll be there. Two more miles and we'll be there. Yes, we'll be there. What then? What then, my child? What then? The tramp will coat the belt back to Daddy Eater's power. Are you sure the tramp will be there? Of course he will. He'll be standing on the doorstep, tears streaming down his simple face, saying, Here you are, Governor. Will it be as easy as all that? Why not? Everything's gone all right up to now. I don't see why our luck should change. I hope not. It'll be such a waste. When you get back to your father, you can burst open the door and say... With a throb in my voice. Yes, a throb in the voice is certainly indicated. You will stand in front of him and say, I'd travel far and risk much. And here is the man in all his innocence. And then he'll pat me on the head and say... <laughs> With a throb in his voice. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. You're rather touching if you knelt, I think. Oh, Robert, if only things would turn out all right. They started to. Well, how do you mean? You called me Robert. Oh, did I? I, I didn't notice it. She'll be going through Lemming unless she turns back. Well, it's an old Morris. No, I, I don't remember the number. She'll have someone with her. A young man, I believe. Get her to telephone me, will you? Excuse me, are you Miss Burgoyne? Yes. Your father's chief constable, isn't he? Yes, why? He wants you to phone him right away. Oh. Says it's urgent. Will you step inside? Why? You're the chap who escaped from the police court this morning. I've seen your picture. Here, you better come inside here. Quick, step on it! We're overconfident. We ought to give him this place a miss. Still, we may do it. That's the best we can get out of her. God, we seem to be crawling. It's awful running away like this, especially with an escaped man. It means I'm an accessory, an accessory. I'll get ten years. Oh, it's terrible. What'll happen to the boys, poor father? We must go faster, faster. You've got to get that coat back. I can't go back now. Oh, poor father, what shall I tell him? What shall I tell him? Well, I suppose it must be the men. I can't understand it. Keep my daughter's name out of it, Inspector. Well, for the time, anyway. That's all right, sir. Don't you worry. The search is well underway. He's probably forced her to go to Ashcroft Forest. There'd be less chance of them being found there. We're combing the forest now, sir.
all right, my dear. We're perfectly safe here. We'll hide here for a bit. The whole thing will be over in a couple of hours or so. And we can shake hands and you'll never see me again. Won't I? Well, you needn't ever see me again. Put your collar on. It's all right, Jen. Now, you'll do as I tell you. I know exactly how you feel. You'll see no end, can you? If you don't believe it's true. The night always exaggerates things, doesn't it? Personally, I like the night is much more alive than the day. Look at those people in that train eating. Actually eating. I tell you what, I'll scout about for something to eat, shall I? No, we'll wait. We'll wait until the coat's safely in our hands and then we'll eat and how we'll eat. Straight through a seven course dinner, second helpings and champagne. Well, I'm going now. I shan't be long. And off we'll go and dangle the belt before their goggling eyes. And then I carry you all the way home. Well, now for the lodging house. Look what I pinched from a row woman's hut. Well, how do I look? Erica. Erica, darling, do say something. Can't. I just can't. I know I'm being silly, but I'm so terribly. Terribly tired. My dear, of course you are. What can I do? Perhaps you better get along home. No. I won't see it out now. For months. Will I be all right here? I don't want anything to happen to me. You'll be perfectly safe, I promise you. Now, you have a little nap and try and forget all your worries. That's right. Dowser. Dowser. Look after her, Dowser. I don't want anything to happen to you either. Nobby. Why, Nobby? He's been dead since before the war. Oh. Got a beard. One left. Okay. Number six. Thanks. Oh, Will in yet? Will? No, I've kept his bed. Your pal of his? Yeah. Didn't know he had one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Good night.
Yet, you understand? I don't want to come here again. That's all right, then you keep out. But if it beats ain't worth sweeping it. Get out. Oh, well, hasn't gone yet, has he? You're his pal, you ought to know. Just woke up. Do you know which is old world we're trying to mend her? No, mate, never heard of him. Is it? So you are a pal of his after all. How long has this racket been going on? In a matter well, of fact, who wants me? Oh, the governor. Hello, Ducky. Cup wanting mending. Don't you come your racket in here? What's your trouble, Cody? Getting your pal to bust up my china so that you can mend it. My pal? I don't want any argument from you. It's the last time you come in here. What's he mean? Well, who are you? Listen, I want to talk to you. I'll hang you in a minute. It's in my one. I've got to talk to you. It's about something very important. What's your game? And who says that I'm your pal? Oh, no, that was a mistake. <laughs> I just think it blinking well was. I've chased you for nearly 50 miles. 50 miles? What for? Do you know anything about a raincoat? I don't know what you're talking about. I've got to get along. You do know something about it. But I'm not interested in you. I only want the coat. Go on, we're all bashies mugging. Yeah, you get something you don't expect in a minute. You got a coat from Tom's hat, didn't you? Well, it's mine. Only one for evidence. You can have it back afterwards. It's no good asking me. I keep telling you I don't know nothing about it. Oh, why are you so obstinate? I tell you it's a matter of life and death. It's going to save me. It's going to save me from a charge of murder. The police are after me now. Mm. Why, come here. Murder here. I can't hear about here. Yeah, no before you... Erica. I got them. Find her. Come on, I'm not finished with you yet. What's the idea? Here, wait a minute. Where is he going? The police are after him. Hurry up, Sergeant. They just run out. Carter up, quick! What's she out here? I don't want to get anything. Drive that way. Here, yeah, the cat knows all about it. He's keeping his mouth shut. Kidnapped. They're coming. What's the matter with the darn dog? My Jesus! Oh. Coat! Look! The raincoat! Pull up! We've got it! I didn't know what you were up to, Governor. Coming along and saying you're my pal. Dragging me about like this, I, I feel like a shy bride. I'm terribly glad. I wonder how far the nearest telephone box is. I ought to get on to Father. Here you are. It's mine, all right. There's no belt. Now, what have you done with the belt? What have you done with that belt? Belt? Well, here's where it was fixed. What happened to it? There wasn't no belt on it when the bloke gave it me. And it was my belt that... Who did you say gave you the coat? I told you, some fella. But well, can't you remember what it looked like? Yes, he blinked. What do you mean, blinked? How do you mean? Like it. Anyhow, his evidence is as good as the belt. He knows that I didn't give it to him. Oh, oh no, Governor, it wasn't you. It's no good, Robert. Of course it is. It's perfectly good proof. The police will never believe his evidence. What do you mean, I'm respectable? And as for Tom saying he was given a practically new overcoat, well, they'll think it's fantastic. <laughs> I've got to talk to you more about this. The police will catch up with us soon. Where's the best place to hide? Well, there's Brickett's Wood about three mile off, and there's a quiet little lane I know where nobody goes much before you get to every... Oh, what about the old mine workings? About a yeah. mile or so up. Hey, That'll do. Come yeah. on, Come on.
Let's try the old mine workings. He's all right now, Mike. You're all right, you mean I'm going back. Don't sit in the video. Come on, Hold on, miss. Hold on. Have you got him? No, he's got him now. Which way did he go? Now, Miss Burgoyne. Miss Burgoyne, we know that your being involved in this is no fault of your own. Really? Well, we naturally surmise that you were trying to trap him. I see. When he gave you the slip, where do you think he was making for? I don't know. And he said nothing at all? Nothing at all. Miss Burgoyne, I'm doing all I can to make things easy for you. Will you please try and make them easy for me? I've got a job on here. I've got to find a murderer. Then why don't you? Well, we're doing our best. You're not. Can't you see what a mistake you're making? You find a clue, then follow it to death. The evidence against Tisdall is very strong. It's not. Can't you tell he didn't do it? He had no reason to. The woman was helping him. He told you that. Yes, he told us a lot of things. Well, if you'd stop chasing him, you might find the real murderer. I should like to know why you take all this interest in Tisdall. Because... Because he's innocent. He couldn't kill anything. He's much too kind and gentle. Why, he's the finest person... I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, gentlemen. For what we're about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Christopher... Try not to be so noisy with your soup. Okay. Your father would like to see you when you finish, Miss Erica. Come in, Erica, my dear. I wanted us to have a little talk together. I can quite understand that you didn't want to speak in front of those detectives. But surely there's something that you want to tell me that might help us to find this fellow? No, Father, there's nothing. I see. You still persist in shielding a man wanted for murder. Is not a murderer. You know as well as I do that you're committing a criminal offense. And I'm responsible. You'd better read this. Must you do this, Father? You'd better go to your room. Stay there for the time.
Is everything all right? Has our will found him? I'm going to give myself up. That's why I came back. I want you to tell them that I forced you into it. To say goodbye. I did it because I wanted to. It's no use. The coconut belt was the end of everything. I suppose they found it in the car. Yes, they brought it in while I was being questioned. No belt in the pocket by any chance? No. Nothing but a box of matches in the Grand Hotel. Grand Hotel. Yes, why? I've never been there in my life. Then whoever killed... Has been, or still is, the Grand Hotel. Didn't Cinderella. What's the idea? What idea? This dressing up for the ball. I don't know what you mean, officer. Well, uh, this. I've been watching you for the last half hour. You came back. I don't know what I'd have done without you. After all, you're the only one that can recognize him. These boots pinch a bit. I haven't had time to slit them for my corns. Hadn't we better start looking for him? Yes, Here, what's that place? That's the office. Well, perhaps they know a bloke what twitches. I'll go and ask. Excuse me, miss. You, you don't happen to know... Just a moment, please. please. All right. No good asking her. She'll never know a thing like that. What about driving this, eh? Yes, anywhere. Yes. Yeah. Stay here long. What should I have beer? I don't think we can get any at the moment. I better order it as I'm the man, eh? Two cups of tea, please. Indian or China, sir? No, tea. You keep an eye while I telephone our father. Very good, son. Haven't you seen anyone with a twitch yet? Uh, too many people. Find him. Well, I can't ask him all if they twitch his camera. Now we've bitten all water, we can chill you. He must be here somewhere. 
excite your dancing feet. I'm right here to tell you, mister, no one can like the drama man when it comes to doing tricks with a pair of hickory sticks. I'm right here to tell you, sister, no one can like the drama man. Every man who plays in the band is wonderful too. I've got to give credit where credit is due. But when it comes to make that music pop, make you give it all it's got, I'm right here to tell you, mister, no one can like the drama man. Sort of twitches, just with one eye. No, both eyes. I can't see nothing with all these people crowding about. Can't we go to another table? Well, we can't, they're all taken. Well, we've got to get a look somehow. What about dancing around, eh? Can you dance? No, of course not, Ducky, but I don't mind having a go. It's only half walking anyway. I right. wish I had my old boots. you all man don't come in again like that it isn't funny and I pay someone else to make the orchestrations I'm afraid it's no good ducky we mustn't give up the cops have been watching us for the past quarter of an hour I know I didn't think you'd noticed I didn't think you hadn't neither they're probably looking for mr. Tisco I shouldn't take too many of those, old man. I'll take as many as I do for you. All right, all right. I'm sorry, they were giving me to stop this twitch. It's got to be stopped somehow. It's getting on my nerves. Come on, boys. Time's up. I want to thank you for your patience and your consideration. 
The whole thing's beyond me. Please go in. Yeah, sorry, sir, but it can't be helped. Yes, of course. Go ahead. Do whatever you think fit. There's nothing you need yeah, to do. Just uh, I was saying there's nothing you need do to her. It's all right. I'm not going to give any trouble. But you didn't think of that sooner. You might have saved a great deal of trouble. Well, take him inside, Sergeant. I'm going to get Miss Burgoyne and the other man. Ask him to come out, will you? What happened to the bandsman, waiter? I don't know, sir. I was trying to find a doctor. They don't seem to know what to do for him. Well, can't we help? And your last efforts at first aid weren't much of a success, were they? Can't you be human for once? Here. the black in his face. That's him, miss. It's him, all right. You gave an old tramp a raincoat, didn't you? What did you do with the belt that belonged to him? What did I do with the belt? <laughs> I twisted it round her neck and choked the life out of her. <laughs> Found him. It's all right. It's all right. Ask Mr. Tisdale to dinner. 